Yeah, I'm Christoph Kirst. I'm a fellow for physics and biology at Rockefeller University. And I'm interested, my background is dynamical systems theory, and I'm interested in uh, neuroscience applications of dynamical systems theory to infer um, computation in the brain. My background is mathematics and physics, so I'm always inclined to theory. And if you look, for example, the uh, history of physics, um, there are some uh, good examples where theory helped a lot to prog make progress in understanding, even before any experimental results were there. Let's say general relativity, for example. It was developed far before any experiment evidence. Nowadays, people detect gravitational waves, for example, right? So, or claim to. So, so uh, for neuroscience, I think it's a similar problem. It's a very complex system. It's very hard to understand, and theory is just essential for it, in my view, to generate ideas, uh, to generate understanding conceptual, to make some conceptual progress in, in trying to better understand what this complex system is actually doing in its detail. My favorite theory is dynamical systems theory in all aspects. Maybe even stochastic dynamical systems are the most interesting. And maybe also, at the moment, probably the most relevant in order to understand the brain because there are lots of unknowns which you could model in terms of noise. There's also lots of noise in the system itself. And there's lots of dynamics. So combining those in random dynamic systems, that's definitely my favorite approach. And actually, I think it's um, there's lots of emphasis on Bayesian inference models, let's say, and then maybe also in very deterministic models, but combining those, that's only recently that people look at this. I did lots of theory before, and now in Rockefeller, it's a highly experimental place. In my experience, it's, it's I think, mostly a communication thing. So theorists sometimes live in their bubble and do their theory and, and, and ignore a bit the experimentalist. That's that's not true for everyone. There are extremely good theorists who collaborate closely with experiments. And then experiments might, might say, oh, theory, I always was a bit skeptical about this, so they'd like to focus on this. So I think the, the main thing is to, that, that there's better communication between these areas and maybe also more educational background in, for both of them. So if you study whatever, applied mathematics, there should be some experimental courses substituting to actually see how hard some experiments are really are. So sometimes at the theorist you think, oh, just you could just do this in one day, but then you figure out it takes you a year to answer that particular question. Vice versa, maybe for the experimentalist, they say, oh, this theoretical guy, he's just living in his house and <laughs> making new ideas all the time that's cheap. But that might be not true because good ideas are not that cheap, I think. And in this way, I, I think just enhancing communication between both would be a great thing. And to make progress in neuroscience. Excellent.